In the Cold War of the early 1960s, the nuclear arms race between the Soviet Union and the United States is reaching a crisis point. A fierce debate breaks out within America's armed forces about the best way to protect the nation and its arsenal of missiles from annihilation by Soviet intercontinental ballistic missiles. By the 1960s, the popular imagination has fixed on the idea that nuclear war will involve all-out total war assault Nuclear Armageddon was very much on the horizon. The potential for mass destruction was, was very real. The Soviet Union truly respected one thing only, and that was military force. And so we had to show that our technology was equal or better than theirs. So the US Army raises the stakes of military defense and develops this the Nakoma Anti-Ballistic Missile System. At the heart of the complex is a state-of-the-art radar. This is a one-of-a-kind radar system that was constructed at the height of the Cold War, the height of American paranoia. Construction of this installation begins in the late 1960s. Teams of engineers excavate nearly one million cubic feet of earth to create a vast pit, 53 feet into the ground. They line it with concrete, reinforced by 22,000 tons of iron and steel to shield against nuclear electromagnetic radiation. Inside, Multiple floors cover 127,000 square feet and contain all the tactical operational systems and weapon control. The groundbreaking radar has ambition. The technology develops to create a virtual radar antenna that is capable of focusing in different directions without actually having to move a big piece of steel mesh. The phased array is a radar that will, through the computer system, will detect a missile or an object coming in from Russia at a greater distance. This was the cutting edge of technology to allow the USA to feel safe that should there be a strike from the USSR, they'd be able to take out those nuclear warheads before they landed on American soil. But achieving this level of defense requires the most advanced computer in the Western world at the time. Engineered to handle 10 million instructions per second, the radar's computer is located deep beneath the blast-proof pyramid. It controls an on-site fleet of 46 missiles held in underground launch silos designed to shoot down incoming Soviet weapons all directed by the huge circular radar dishes mounted on each side of the pyramid. But the system faces incredible defense challenges. The Nakoma system was operating at the limits of 1960 technology. And the biggest problem they had was you had seconds to decide, are you gonna fire your missile to stop that missile? Or is it a decoy? Is it something else? To be effective, it had to be able to target multiple Soviet nuclear missiles, all at the same time. The radars could detect a Soviet missile incoming and give six minutes warning. The missiles could hit a target on 30 seconds notice. That meant that as long as the big computers could make their decisions fast enough, a nuclear-tipped missile could be in the air and intercepting an inbound Soviet ICBM in time to blow it up. Working out these technologies takes many years. And it isn't until late 1975 that the Nakoma base is finally fully equipped with both long-range Spartan and short-range Sprint nuclear missiles. 
these weapons ensure that there are two chances of taking out incoming Soviet missiles. We have here Sprint Missile Field. You will notice that there's a white cover on top of this missile site that is mainly fiberglass. When they fire this missile, it will go directly through the fiberglass. When they launch these Spartan missiles, you'll notice that there is a steel rail on each side. When this missile is ready for firing, they send the signal, and then there's explosive charges in that area, and they'll blow this cover out of the way and be speeded on its way to the outer atmosphere. Completed in 1975, the complex costs $5 billion, the modern-day equivalent of $27 billion. Those missiles were so fast and so accurate and directed by radars that were so powerful that the United States was able to demonstrate its capability to the point at which the US could be made invulnerable to Soviet attack, scared the hell out of the Russians. But in early 1976, the American political climate takes a new turn. After just five months of full combat readiness, the U.S. government believes projects like Nakoma are ineffective war deterrents and abruptly shuts the complex down, leaving it abandoned. Although it was technically operational, rumor has it, it was only ever switched on, screens alight, lights flashing, buzzing noises, for three days. So when you look at Nakoma, you're in for a shock. When we waste money, we really go down in flames, don't we? I mean, this has to be one of the greatest waste of taxpayers' money in the Cold War, if not in history. But many experts think that the billions spent at Nakoma actually helped to keep the Soviets in check. If you look at it that way, the very fact that, that the nuclear war never did break out, maybe the American taxpayers did get value for money. If five billion bucks was the cost, of nuclear peace, that is five billion bucks well spent. Today, the Nakoma Safeguard Complex lies abandoned in a remote corner of North Dakota. Plans are afoot for Nakoma to be opened up as a tourist attraction. And you might think, well, why am I going to want to travel a distance and pay money to go and visit this giant concrete eyesore? Well. You could look at it this way. And it's a monument to the fact that the two nations could come together and resolve their issues to create peace. Despite its short active life, Nakoma pushed the boundaries of radar and computer technology. It proved that simply flooding the planet with nuclear missiles was not the way to win the Cold War. And I think reason enough to keep Nakoma as it is, and to go along to learn about that history and feel the significance of what is otherwise just this giant, mysterious concrete structure. <laughs>